What is up ladies and gents, in today's video we are going to break down the Valley of Slaughter. To start off, please make sure you go into your settings and turn on all animations. Settings, gameplay, character, attack, show all animations because it is crucial to see what is happening and where to get heals. Now to begin, there will be six pins circling the boss. The reason for that is because the boss does a lot of damage and sometimes drops lava and you don't want to be anywhere near that so the tank controls that so you can brain dead DPS. DPS will stand on pin 1 and the tank will rotate between 4, 5 and 6. He's close enough to provide you with defense buffs but also far enough away to have the boss attack in a different direction. The rest of the pins are just training wheels for a later mech. A key thing to note is the boss does a lot of unavoidable AoE damage. For example, here he does 9,770 damage just for existing and because all players are on pin 1 it will make it easier for the healer to do his job. So the requirement in my opinion to do this dungeon is to be above 10,000 but preferably 12,000. Otherwise you won't give the healer enough time to restore your health. If for example your ego is too big and you don't want to stack on 1 and instead hang on the outside, the result will be you get hit and the healer can't focus his area heals on everyone and in doing so will cause everyone to die because nobody will have full health to withstand the continuous bursts of AoE damage because of you. So congratulations, you're kicked. Suck it up, stack on one, and be a team. That doesn't mean be brain dead. Obviously dodge when you see mechanics, but come back to one afterward. His heavy attack pattern is the same as before, just quicker and that's easy to dodge, just Q. When you see the purple, don't wait. Even the way he drops meteors is the same, just roll out and then come back in. The real mechanic begins when he says, you can't stop me, because he will pound the ground and push everyone back while also dealing 2000 damage. He will mark two players with a stun, and those two players will get a debuff that has a timer on it. Pause the video here if you need to read the debuff. Those players will die if not rescued. So how does this mechanic work exactly? Well, two red players are stunned, but the boss will release one and bond that player with the nearest player to them that isn't marked to create a purple laser. Let's look at this clip. I am marked along with Onyx. We can't move until the boss frees one of us. The boss chose me to bond with the nearest unmarked player, which is a pole. You know this because the boss shoots out a red beam. It is our job to release Onyx with the same purple laser because he only has 10 seconds to die from timer or gets continuously hit by boss until death. The thing that players don't understand is that the two marked players is completely RNG. However, the laser is not. You can control who does the laser by being the one player that goes nearest the stunned players. So as you can see, Yuna, Gamolita, and the game are far away from us on purpose because a pole is planning to do the purple laser mechanic with either me or Onyx depending on who the boss chooses. It will never target Gamolita or Yuna because they're too far away. Once you decide who is bonded, free your teammate and you will see a red ring if you are one of the players that's chosen. What is the red ring and what does it do? The red ring is really just a reference point on how far you can go without breaking the tether. What is breaking the tether? Well, if you walk too far away from your teammate, you lose the purple laser and that is extremely important. The tether is what is needed for the next mechanic to kill multiple sheep, so do not walk away from your bonded partner. I don't care if he runs to the right and dodges to the left or has no clue what he is doing because reality is you have to compensate if they are lost. What we do in our groups is have the purple tether once again gather near one to prepare for the next mechanic while also dodging. But be careful not to touch your teammates with the purple tether as it drains mana quickly from your teammates. Keep your distance. You will have meteors drop on you, dodge forward or backward, never side to side because if you do it, it increases the chances of potentially breaking the tether. So one guy stand on pin 1 and the max distance I would recommend is the other guy to stand on pin 2. If the tether breaks, reset the raid. The boss will announce, die, pulling everyone in to begin the next phase. In this phase, he will summon six sheep that need to be pulled to the players with the laser. So remember the pins that we had earlier? Party number one, two, three goes to the left, four, five, six goes to the right. The group pins are just a reference point. That means you need to split up and target the sheep and pull them to the players with the laser and kill the sheep. 
laser guys will not really move from pin 1. You have leeway, but just generally stay near pin 1. They will get the aggro from the sheep once the sheep hit the laser because it does a lot of damage. You can't kill the sheep alone as they have over 100,000 health. As a team, for the title, sure, kill the sheep together, but for mech, let's not. So again, if you have purple laser, it's not your job to gather sheep. You can maybe pull one near you, let the rest pull the outside sheep. Otherwise, you risk breaking the tether. As before, we tried to pull all the sheep to one, and the reason for that is because a tank will redirect the boss to charge twice into the sheep to deal massive damage. The laser is enough, however, it's faster to have the boss charge. Make sure to roll block and still not break the tether while doing so. Keep your distance if you don't want to have to dodge. Otherwise, it results in a wipe because you need all the sheep to die for the next mechanic to continue. After all the sheep are dead, they will drop a glowing orb with a prompt to interact. Do not interact with it until after meteors. Why? Because if a meteor drops on the prompt, it will destroy, which means wipe for the raid. Once you dodge meteors, run back and everyone, not just one, but everyone has to go and touch the prompt to gain a shield to survive the boss's next slam. If you don't, it's a wipe. Also, your choice, but if you are one of the players that still has the purple tether, you can break the tether by running opposite sides after all the sheep are dead and dodge meteors immediately or wait until after the prompt to break the tether. Completely up to you. It causes a one second stun, but you can go back to the DPS once it's done. Once you finish the mechanic, get the free DPS on the boss. Now, once the boss goes under 40 or 30%, I can't remember off the top of my head. A black sheep will spawn along with two stunned players. It's their job to kill the black sheep that spawns because it has over 400,000 health. And if it's not killed, it will drop a meteor and wipe the raid. We got lucky and it spawned near the laser. However, for most people, you need to rotate back to one and have people bring the black sheep over to you. The reason this mechanic is so hard yet so simple is because not only do you have to deal with the sheep, but you have to dodge meteors, AoE, and make sure that your healer is also healing everyone while mechanics are happening. The final mechanic of the dungeon is the same as before where instead of six sheep going towards the laser, it will be eight sheep. So just do what you did before, no need for a video. Now it's work doing these videos, so this will be my last one unless you guys show me that you appreciate this. My last video only got 14 likes and 13 comments. So share this video and get this to 50 likes minimum and comment thanks. And if this doesn't happen, then thanks for those that did support this content. But beyond in real life work, this takes too much time away from my real life for underappreciated work. I will private them and members only can see them. And in the future, I will only upload stale clear videos with no guide. Thanks guys. As always, stay blessed.